Alrighty guys, so today we're gonna do the cellular respiration flow chart. And your assignment will look just like this. It says, please complete the following summary flow chart for cellular respiration. You will need to use note slides to find the information. And we did those notes, uh, what was it, like last week one day? I think we did notes on cellular respiration. And if you had any questions, you could also refer to this video that I'm currently making. The, it said the tool needs to be loaded in a new browser. So right here where this is, there'll be a button and that's what you'll click on. And it's going to open up this here that says chapter seven flowchart. And you're gonna go through, it's a two page document and you'll be filling it out. So if you feel like you are totally good with this stuff and you know cellular respiration inside and outside, you can go for it. You can use those note slides. All of the information is in my notes or my lecture videos if you watched those. If you're a little bit more confused, then you can kind of follow along with me and you can fill it out as we go. You will be turning this in for points at the end of it. Whoa. Okay, so aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration is only going to occur if oxygen is present. If you don't have oxygen, you can't do aerobic respiration. There are three steps to it. We start off with glycolysis. The next step you're going to go to is going to be the Krebs cycle. And the third and final step is the electron transport chain. When we did cellular or photosynthesis, we talked about abbreviating that to the ETC. So the location of these, glycolysis is going to occur in the cytosol or the cytoplasm. The Krebs cycle occurs in the mitochondrial matrix and the electron transport chain is going to occur in the Christae or Christi if you'd rather say it like that. As far as your reactants are concerned, for glycolysis, you're gonna use glucose. For the Krebs cycle, we're going to use pyruvic acid. And for the electron transport chain, we are going to use oxygen. And your products, there's a lot of products. We have two pyruvic acids, two NADH, two water, two proton, and two ATP. For the Krebs cycle, we're going to have six NADHs, two FADH2s, four CO2, which is carbon dioxide molecules, and two oops, ATP. And then for the electron transport chain, you're going to end up with some water along with about 34 ATP. It says the total number of ATPs formed from aerobic respiration. So you're gonna go back up here. You got 34 plus two plus two. That is going to give us a total of 38 molecules of ATP are being produced. Now on the next page is about anaerobic respiration. And this one does not require oxygen. The prefix an actually means without. So we're saying without aerobics or without oxygen. There are two steps or two different pathways rather. They're not necessarily steps because you don't go from one to the next, but there's two different pathways that you could take when you're doing anaerobic respiration. You could do lactic acid fermentation or you could do alcoholic. And whenever you're doing these two pathways, while well, some organisms can do both, humans can only go through lactic acid fermentation. We cannot do alcoholic fermentation. 
The location of these is going to be in the cytoplasm or the cytosol, if you'd rather call it that. Oops. As far as your reactants are concerned, if you go back up to the top here, so we go from step one, which is glycolysis, to step two, to the Krebs cycle, and then we go to the electron transport chain. So if we can't do the aerobic respiration, which is basically this last step down here, because this is where you need oxygen, you're going to be left with pyruvic acid. So you're going to go from the Krebs cycle into one of these two fermentation pathways. So you're going to be using pyruvic acid for both of them. And as far as products are concerned, from lactic acid fermentation, you get lactic acid, which isn't really something you'd want to be making because it does lead to some pain within your body. If we're doing alcoholic fermentation, you're going to be getting alcohol for one. And this is what most plants are gonna go through. Um, or you'll be getting bread, uh, wine, beer, things like that. And the overall reaction for cellular respiration. So we're going to have glucose plus oxygen. And that is going to yield, I had a little arrow, I would have it there, let's see. Normally you draw the arrow in there. I'm not sure how to draw the arrow in there with that. So I'm just going to put yields water plus carbon dioxide plus 38 ATP. So that is our overall reaction for cellular respiration. And that is what you will want to have whenever you turn in your flow chart. And this flow chart will also help you uh, to study for your test, which will be later on this week. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later.